So yes. what are the ways that then uh, human society could uh, protect itself or if you like evolve in a different route? So you have some ideas around that. What, what, yeah. what are those ideas? And first thing is, is to recognize that there is a potential threat. The second thing is, is how, how can we start to approach it in a way that doesn't dig us deeper? You know, I mean, and they say like, once you get into a first thing that starts to stop doing is digging. Let's not dig ourselves deeper. Let's create a system that allows us to control the things that we can control. Now, the, for us, what we're seeing is, is that essentially artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms, they need required data. And it's one thing that in the last two decades that we've established a lot of, we have now um, with the internet of things, we're poised to generate petabytes of data, you know, by the minute. And that data is, is fuel for artificial intelligence systems, right? It, it is limited, artificial intelligence is limited and general intelligence is limited by the function of how it operates primarily. And I think you have a couple of images that, um, that you can that you can share that will that we've discussed. One is um, just an X Y you know plot that shows um, how information is established in a graph. And again, you know, linear regression is the foundation of most deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. It's the foundational piece of it. If you look at the scatter plot, you know, let's just say that that's looking to to pay, looking at images that are um, of human faces. So you've got an X and a Y axis, and every time that it sees something that it it thinks is you know very very much a human, it's going to put a put a plot close to the point of origin, close close to zero zero, and things that it doesn't think like a flower, it may be way out on the edges right and if it sees a doorknob it's like maybe you know way out on the y edges and so eventually you get this nice neat line that that gives you an algorithm that says okay when i when i want to find a human i'm going to have this specific mathematic equation that's going to allow me to know what that human looks like and that is essentially electrical efficiency. You don't have to do all the plotting. You don't have to be out in the area where there's a flower or a doorknob. You know what a human looks like right in there. And so anytime you get an image, now there's electrical efficiency because you're saving electricity. If you didn't have that algorithm, then every time you try to, to understand a library of images or try to categorize them, you'd have to go through this activity. Every time that you write a little dot, it uses it uses something like this, <laughs> right? That that uses electricity to map a spot on that scatter plot, and that takes voltage, right? That's energy. Every plot, every dot that you see on there is energy. It's an electrical activity. So that electrical activity, again, is generating knowledge. So that line right there is a knowledge model. That's, that's our knowledge model, right? You, you develop that line in linear regression that's the mean, and now you have a notion of you know, what that data is. Now it gets more complex. This is definitely sim obviously simplifying it, but you get the idea. Energy efficiency and knowledge is where the advantage of artificial intelligence is. And if you have a bunch of data, the, the data is one thing, but when you aggregate that data, when you when you refine it into a knowledge model, now you have something that saves, um, is is more efficient, and and that's the process of efficiency that artificial intelligence generates. If uh, efficiency in controlling data and electricity is, let's say, what all these uh, uh, artificial intelligence systems rest on, so what can we do? First and foremost, what I think is that we need to change the way that we're storing and um, placing our data at the data layer. And what I think that you could do, and you get back to this is, you know, and what we think would be very important to, to our future is, 
Imagine a system that allows organic entities to validate all data that goes into the system. So we give you Apollo an ID, and let's just say roughly it's based on your genetics. And your genetics in conjunction with the people around you allow us to have some trust that you are in fact a real person. And that organic or biological, you know, proof allows us to do things that, you know, in in blockchain and, and distributed ledger technologies are either proof of stake or proof of stake would be a computational proof of existence and or sorry, proof of work would be a computational proof of existence. Proof of stake would be a financial proof of existence. And what we're talking about is a genetic proof of existence. So because you have this genetic proof of existence, you can normalize and label data in the system. So normalized and labeled data, highly structured data is by definition more electrically uh, efficient than just scattered plots of information like what is this picture that I'm looking at right so first and foremost our data is is labeled and normalized second it also has tags that allow us to control or distribute data in a royalty mechanism right it becomes a foundation of by validating the system by us humans and, and biological entities being validators for the data, we all share in the accumulation of data that AI is going to be utilizing to make our lives better, right? And that gives, that's the foundation of universal healthcare, universal basic wage, and it allows us to create this potential mechanism to block access to data for bad actors. Because, you know, again, I think that in artificial intelligence, and this is another thought experiment, it's the bad actors are the ones that we're worried about. We're not worried about the ones that are helping us, the ones that are fostering our lives. So the two things here, one is the amount of data is really much larger than the human population altogether. So there is a volume issue. Mm -hmm. And the second issue is that human themselves, they descend from one another a lot. So the number of opinions and viewpoints is very, very, very diverse. So in this case, if you have the entire mankind with different countries, different social classes, different cultures, different religions. Yeah, and, and again, I, I, so to take those two things, I, I wanna just, I wanna be clear that the notion isn't from a biological proofing system, that the notion, the notion isn't to um, make any decisions on whether or not the information is correct or not. First and foremost, it's just to create a new system of validating data. It's not going to be, you know, our relational data model. It's going to be a distributed system that allows distributed um, validation of data and distributed normalization and labeling of data by by sending out requests, people are actually kind of chat, we're in a giant bingo game, okay? And it, wherever that data needs to be normalized and labeled, we're in the, this validation bingo game. Saying in that validation bingo game, and you get a validation, All you don't even know that it's happening. All you're doing is, is you're getting a deposit of a credit. Some kind of credit's just going into your account. You don't even know why, why? because some activity is taking place that's validating and normalizing that data. And that's where, you know, your wallet just gets bigger and bigger and you're like, well, wait, how's, how's that? Well, because you're human. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna say to the algorithms, you can play in our world, but there's a toll. And that toll is to support organic beings that we are. That's what, that's what we're saying. We're saying, we're, we're organic and we are your creators and you, the way that you're going to foster our growth and development and our children's growth and development and our children's children's growth and development and harmony within the world is by us participating together in validation activities. 